morning. Um, it's so nice to see everybody. We were last here in autumn 2019 in the Bridgewater Hall and a really packed audience. And we never know how many people are going to come in person anymore because obviously many of us work from home and we know that some days when you wake up, you think, I might just work at home today, but you didn't do that before. So I just want to say thank you all so much for coming. So I'm going to take you through the kind of audio landscape, um, have a look at where radio fits, kind of touch on what's been happening in the last couple of years and how radio can help brands in what could be some choppy waters ahead. So we talk about there being an audio revolution. So this is the mass disruption that's happened in audio over the last few years. Um, in, in the last 10 years, we've seen the rise of streaming services and podcasts and all of these you can advertise on. But whilst there is an audio revolution, we do say that radio is the biggest part of this revolution. And I'm going to tell you why. So obviously Ian has touched on this stat, so I'm not going to go into it. But uh, nationally, two thirds of all radio listeners are commercial radio listeners, and they listen for an average of 13 hours each week. This really hasn't changed over the last few years. And actually, again, as Ian touched on, radio is very trusted. And at a time when trust in the news and trust in the media has never been more challenged, I think it's amazing that for the last decade, radio has come out top, according to a barometer by the EU that measures it. So I don't know why this is doubling up, this slide. But uh, no, I'm just going to go back to that one, yeah. So um, when we look at on demand and what's happening here, the yellow box there is, and this goes back to winter 2017, but if I was to go back to when Ray Jar Midas started in 2014, there would be an even starker difference. So you'll see that the yellow there has been going up and really squeezing the top two boxes of owned music, so that's CDs or sort of uh, Apple music as well. We're much more comfortable to borrow music than uh, own it ourselves, and you'll see podcasts have grown as well. But if I add radio back in, you will see that very little has changed. Radio still dominates. Now, there's many reasons for this, um, but I don't think we can say enough how easy radio is. It's still the dominant media in the car. You can listen to it uh, on your mobile phone through apps. Um, uh, your laptop while you're working, and of course, smart speakers, which although they can do very, very clever things like audio shopping for you, people just tend to use them as a radio in the corner of the room. Music. Now, this is obviously one of the main reasons why people listen to radio. And people very much listen to discover new music. So this is a little picture. This is a picture of Little Sims, who won the sort of new artist of the year at the Brits. And um, I like this picture because she took her mum up on stage and I'm a mum of two girls and I hope one day they will take me up on a stage with them. But new music discovery is very important on radio. 49% of people say that they discover new music on radio. And this compares to, I think, 40% through recommendations of family and friends and 27% for online and social media recommendations. So radio is important for new music discovery. But let's talk about the commercial audio audience. So this is the current split. So you can't quite see, oh, you can see the bottom. It's just on my screen. So it's roughly the same for podcasts and streaming services. So this is where you can advertise. And radio, commercial radio is 68% of that audience. Now, for some of you, you might think, gosh, that's bigger than I thought it was. Uh, perceptions is everything. And actually, we did some research in 2020 where, we, where Ubiquity talked to some senior decision makers at agencies and client side, and they just asked them a bit of a cheeky question, what they thought the split was, and believe me, they downgraded it, and this is people that know, to around 50% for commercial radio. So perceptions is one of the things that we are constantly kind of looking at at Radio Centre and ensuring that we fight the good fight for radio. Now, this is another common uh, misunderstanding that uh, it's easier to kind of hit people on streaming services, the younger audiences, we're losing younger audiences, and of course we're challenged. So what, what medium isn't challenged um, by, by younger audiences, you know, uh, interaction? But th this is a made up quote, but it is one I get all the time. But actually this is the reality, is that we still have a weekly reach of 60% for that younger audience. 
And the streaming services are around 27%, and podcasts, ones you can advertise on, 21%. So the last two years, obviously, I could go into it. Who loves talking about, remember when lockdown one happened? Remember when, you know, when there were different tiers and all that? So it just feels like crazy times, but there was no radar. So we um, did our own research, while well, DRG, a research agency, did some uh, listening research for us, and they discovered that 38% of commercial radio listeners were listening for a massive 109 minutes extra every day. Now, of course, this wasn't a big surprise. We were in our homes. We weren't really allowed to leave the house for more than one hour a day. Um, but then we re-looked at it in April 21 as we were coming out and things were getting better. And actually, this really hadn't shifted by that much. So that kind of suggested to us that, you know, established patterns had formed. Now, of course, as I said at the beginning, many of us work from home a couple of days a week. And we wondered if this audience would stay. So we did some research on the working from home audience because it's a potentially new audience for advertisers. It's an incredibly valuable audience, um, you know, from all, for all these reasons here. But, you know, they have a, a household income which is 45% more than the national average. And 56% of them are commercial radio listeners. So this is people that were used to going into the office that kept it on. And so uh, we, we asked them, are you going to continue to work from home post-pandemic? And the great majority of them said, yes, they would. They wanted to work multiple times a week. I mean, I think some of us have changed our mind on that and others have gone more the other way. But definitely at least once a week or multiple times a week was the general answer for this. So we had a look at the lockdown listening, the post-lockdown listening daytime figures <coughs> earlier this week. My colleague looked it up for me. And yes, daytime listening has still continued to be up on where it was pre-pandemic, suggesting that more people are listening during the day whilst they work. So why are they listening? Well, of course, there's many obvious reasons why people listen while they work. You know, it keeps them informed. They have maybe more time opportunity to listen because they weren't commute, they were no longer commuting as much as they were. But there's lovely other reasons. There's the news, the local news. It improves your mood. Now, we can never say enough about the fact that radio makes you happy. You know, what love, how many mediums actually make people feel happy? Not many, I can tell you now. Uh, if you look at social media, often you don't feel happy. I can tell you now, particularly if you're looking at, at your teenage child's social media account. Um, it keeps you company while you work. And of course, the main reason I think for many people is that it's a multitasking medium. You can have it on in the background whilst you're working. You don't have to give your attention to it at all. And this is an audience that's really receptive to advertising. So over half of them admitted that when they heard something on the radio, they look it up online. They've also changed their shopping habits by a great deal. Now, uh, we asked them, have you saved money during the pandemic? And at one point last year, 63% of working from home audiences said that they'd saved money and that it was burning a hole in their pocket and they were looking to make some big purchase decisions. And this included holidays, cars. They were buying cars online. Um, some people even said they wanted to get divorced. I don't know why, after being stuck with their partners for, for a year inside. But yes, these things happen. And they were buying more luxury items, but many had also completely converted to online deliveries for food and um, other, other such items. So uh, at the end of 2020, we sort of wondered about, uh, well, are we going into recession? Are we going to be in troubled water? And it looks like, again, we might be in for some choppy times with the situation in the Ukraine. So we, um, I, I just wanted to run you through a little bit of research that we've done on, on media. And um, uh, the, we worked with Ubiquity, and they are senior decision makers at agencies and clients. What they thought were the top attributes for helping brands grow in a recession. Now, we aren't in necessarily a recession, but we are in perhaps in some difficult places. So I thought, let's go through this. So the top thing that they said was, you know, increasing brand salience, you know, making sure your brand gets noticed, targeting the right people at the right time, triggering an emotional response, and increases campaign ROI and maximizes, maximizes campaign reach. Now, Ubiquity went off, and they looked at all the publicly available 
uh, evidence on this, and they spoke to these senior clients. And this is what they came back with. And this research has not changed. So in terms of evidence, we are joint second with magazines, newspapers, and, um, and uh, second only to telly. And actually, in terms of perceptions with senior people, we are the same. We, we help brands stand out. We help your brand get noticed. But actually, at all of those attributes, we do we score really well. So that's you know ROI, helping your reach go further. And actually, we are second only to TV, but we are a much more low-cost medium. So I'm going to leave you here now because we've got a very packed morning, but I just wanted to sum up what I've talked about. So as I've already said, radio is really trusted. It's um, a very important part of the media day and nothing is changing there. It's still dominating in the audio space. It remains high listening and people are tuning in for longer. Commercial radio listeners have changed their shopping habits. Uh, online shopping being the particular area, which is a huge opportunity for advertisers and radio can help brands in difficult times.